Hey Roadies, this is Adriana from Roadie Free Radio. In this episode, Larry speaks with Anthony Chiaffi, founder and partner of the Boulevard Carol Entertainment Group, one of the largest production companies providing services for notable clients such as UT, Katie Pearson, Keith Richards, Ronnie Spector, Bruce Springsteen, and several more. It took Anthony approximately 17 years to build his business from the bottom to the top. But how exactly did he play the waiting game? Want a hint? Sixth grade. If you want to hear more about Anthony or are interested in knowing what it takes to run a production company, make sure to check out the full episode number 131 from April 15th, 2019. Thank you for listening and thank you for subscribing. Here are Larry and Anthony. You obviously have and have had, it sounds like most of your life, a pretty, pretty outstanding work ethic that I imagine you picked up from your dad and your mom and grandmother and having a close-knit family like that. But when you and your brother started playing music, because what was your dad doing? My dad was my dad was doing a bread. Well, wait, wait, wait in a minute, he was doing the my bread dad route. would get, but he would get up at one o'clock in the morning, and we could do band practice until ten o'clock at night. He didn't care. He was cool with it. He was good. So here are my two sons. Right, I've just worked my balls off in the Bronx to like create a life yeah. for them, and uh, we're 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 in the seventies. Yeah, late seventies. I mean, or mid seventies, mid seventies. You know, by the late seventies, my brother and I were out uh, touring with a cover band that we had created, okay, and went all over the country with it, right? And and built our own PA, and we're in Ohio at like Ohio State, and if something broke, we had to figure out how to fix it. Sure. And like, you know, we had an agent said, "Here's here you're playing, and you get you know the the Rand McNally map, not GPS." (laughs) Yeah, right. Of course, I know. You know, you want to call home? Let's stop at the at the phone booth. Right. Hey, yeah, with a with a dial. <laughs> I'm still part of the generation that when when I moved to Los Angeles, they had the Thomas Guide. Oh, there you go. Remember yeah, those well, things? Thomas. I used to do it on a bread route. Same thing. Oh, you know, so, so. You know, yeah. But, but so my my question is: so you didn't get any pushback from an old school dad who was like, "What the fuck? My kids have long hair. They're smoking dope and they're playing music." I, you know, I, I'm driving well, yeah. a bread route. Or did you? Well, you know, this it's funny thing about it is uh, my brother and I were twins. My brother did all the experimental stuff. I never smoked, never drank in my whole life. Wow. Because I, I – yeah, well, you know, when I was like 13, I think I got drunk when I was thir- – or maybe 16. I shouldn't say 13. Um, but I remember feeling – I feeling I couldn't play my guitar and I felt weird. I said, you know what? But I always took the responsibility of that. So uh, – and a lot of people who look at – that I've grown up with and, and you know, I've been friends for years who are musician friends who are all now corporate guys or whatever. They all look like enviously like, oh, you can do whatever you want. But, you know, the, the, the sacrifice of it is is you. – I've never worked for anybody. Right. In my whole life. Yeah. I never I – mean, I mean except for working maybe when I was in a summer job. Right. You know, but I've never worked for anybody my whole life. Wasn't the bread so route? I'm, wasn't the bread route working for somebody? Well, I don't, it was a franchise. Uh, so in other words, you buy the bread, and if you don't deliver it, you pay for the bread. <laughs> and the and the accounts you have to you have to, there's no guarantee. It's it's you know it's it, those guys work hard, but the but the, the thing of it is, I've never worked for anybody ever. Sure. So if I had to feed my kids or put them in school. I had to figure out a way to do it. I mean, my wife was was a, a very successful woman, and when she had kids, she stopped them. But she, you know, she she's a very very uh, smart financial person, and uh, you know, yeah. my kids are, um, you know, my my, my one kid's a, a golf pro, he's a, you know, and my uh, daughter's got a PhD, you know, nice. yeah. So I mean, they have good work ethic, yeah. which is. And no but, interest, no interest, obviously, from either of them to to go in the family business. <laughs> they have no interest. <laughs> <laughs> my, my daughter's a, my daughter's a psychologist. She has some interest of treating, but not being involved. <laughs> yeah, and your son, your son's clear. Like, well, I could be outside in the sunshine, or I could be right. in this building. Right. A and- bad day. Yeah, a bad day is when it rains. You know. <laughs> yeah, so good for him. But you know, that's and they follow. I, I think we taught him to do what you love. If you if you love something, it's not work. You know. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It, it's not work. So. Yeah. And there's a big movement. You know, it's interesting that you talked about the fact that you had the bread route, but then on top of that, you know, as soon as you got done, you played music or you built your business and you did that. Yeah. And for 17 years, you played the long game. And yeah, there's, a, there's a big movement. I wouldn't say a big movement, but there is today, you know, to the side hustle. Everyone's got a side hustle. You know, this is my side hustle, right? Yeah. I'm a filmmaker, but this is my side hustle because. I love doing this. I could do this all day. And, right. and and people do that. And But there's a patience thing 
when you're young, 22, 25, whatever, you're like, fuck, I got to do it now. I got to get, I got to get the stats up on my podcast or whatever the hell it is, or on my company, I got to get out there. How did you stick with it for 17 years and not say, fuck, man, this is going to be impossible? You know what? I, I have to tell you that I, 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 I had a vision. You know, it's funny because um, <clears throat> when I went to my 10th year high school uh, reunion, my brother and I were on tour. We had a fly in from, I think it was, I might have been Los Angeles. We flew in and we were just home for a day uh, and we went to our class reunion and it was great. And my sixth grade teacher was there, right? Because it was, he was retiring. And when we were in sixth grade, it was his first year. We, and he, he showed me uh, an essay that I wrote in sixth grade of what I wanted to do when I grow up. <laughs> and it was exactly of what I was doing. Wow. And I said to myself, man, if I can't, I can't let this guy down. I can't, I can't not do it, you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was funny cause my bro, my father came out with my brother and I on a tour bus for like a week and a half on a tour and he had so much fun. And my father was, you know, a, 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 an Italian guy, old school, not going to tell you he loves you every day, you know, not gonna, uh, you know, yeah. not that type of guy. Yeah. But man, he was proud. And I said, man, this is the greatest thing ever. I get choked up thinking about it. I could tell, man. You know, so I said, let's, let's, uh, you know, and my brother and I, you know, we were twin brothers and we would really kind of, we would fight. We would, you know, but it was like a spark and we would push each other a little bit more. We were very competitive, mm. but you know, like, let's see who can do better. Let's see who can do better numbers. Let's see who can get this. Let's see. And it, it pushed you, man. Yeah. I don't know if kids have that push now, but you, you know, you're a filmmaker. Yeah. That That's, <laughs> that's a tough road. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Hey, what's happening, roadies? It's Larry here. Just wanted to thank you so much for listening to this short clip. I really hope you got something out of it. If you can take two seconds to head over to iTunes and drop us a review or a comment, we would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Keep listening. Keep coming back. Stay healthy out there. And remember, no roadies, no rock and roll.